Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And I start by drawing members' attention to my register of interests in relation to my being Honorary President of the Scottish Association for Public Transport and the Honorary Vice President of Rail Future UK. And may I also uh, start by thanking John Finney for the opportunity to discuss railways and, in particular, how they may be part uh, of the post-COVID world. Um, John Finney mentioned uh, Mr Spaven. Um, I have his uh, wonderful um, published uh, uh, Atlas of uh, Scotland's Railways, uh, historical uh, view of, of, of the railways of Scotland, which my wife gave me as a Christmas present uh, some years ago. An excellent book. I commend it to you all. The railway is, without question, the most comfortable way to travel. And if I look at a comparison between my driving from home to Parliament and, alternatively, making the journey using a train for all but my 15 miles to the station, it is actually half the cost to use the train. But more to the point, it is very substantially more environmentally friendly. And then the government plans will become even more so. The steam trains that I travelled in the 1950s, I particularly remember a trip from Benderloch to Oban in 1956, to attend hospital after sunstroke were fascinating. They were noisy, aromatic, with all the mechanical gubbins reciprocating in full view, engaging to the eye, but environmentally friendly. They most certainly were not. Coal burning and emitting vast amounts of smoke and particulates. Today's trains are faster, smoother, quieter, and increasingly powered by renewable energy. And the refreshments from the onboard trolley uh, on a longer journey are tastier and use more locally sourced ingredients. The overnight sleeper is the only way to travel south if travel to the south is something you must do. I'm old enough to remember when the Highland Main Line was jewelled. At least I'm fairly certain it used to be jewelled all the way down uh, to the central belt. We'll live with many of the short-sighted decisions made in the 1960s, uh, we all remember the Beeching Report, but actually that's a very unfair description of what happened. Beeching was paid a considerable amount to implement a policy decision emanating at the desk of the then UK Transport Minister, Ernest Marples. He was the managing director of Marples Ridgeway, a road construction firm with substantial interests in building motorways. He may tell us all we need to know about his motivations and actions, Remember that he ended up fleeing from the House of Lords at, to Monaco to escape prosecution for tax fraud. We should perhaps remember this inglorious period in our railway history eh, as the Marples catastrophe. But we now have the opportunity to improve the railways we have and extend the reach of our railways. In my part of the country, it is time to look at taking the railway back to Ellen and then to the biggest non-railway towns, which are Peterhead, population 19,000, and Fraserburgh, population 15,000, which are in my constituency. Economic sense, environmental sense, energy sense. My favourite mode of transport, the railway. I have happy memories of uh, travelling on bits of the network that don't exist anymore. Brought up in Cooper, I used to choose to go the long way round to Dundee, to the swimming baths, via Tentsmuir, Tayport, Newport and Wormit. No longer there, perhaps in future it might be. Uh, thank you once again, Mr Finney, and thank you for the government for your support of our railways. Thank you very much uh, for calling me to speak this evening, presiding officer.